Hi, I'm Colleen. I am a comic book artist. Uh, there we go. This is my comic book, Bandette. It's the story of the greatest thief in the world, Bandette. Uh, she lives in France. She's really cool. Um, but I don't make this comic on my own. I'm the artist. It is written by, it, it's written first um, in a script like this. And this is the guy who writes it. His name is Paul Tobin. He's um, a writer of many comic books, including uh, the comic book adaptations of video games like The Witcher and Plants vs. Zombies and Angry Birds. He also has some other titles. He's also my husband. <laughs> um, so this, oh, go back one. There we go. Um, so he writes a script. It looks like this. Um, it's all very laid out for me. And then that's his job. He's done. Then I draw a page on paper like this. This is my, my comic in black and white. That's actually the first page of the first issue of Bandette. And then I scan it into my computer and I do colors and add letters and, uh, and make it all pretty like that. And then I do that several times to make an issue. And I keep doing that over and over and over again until I have several volumes of a comic book. And then if you do it really well, somebody gives you a couple of awards for it. Those are the Eisner Awards. And uh, that's me in 2016, as I am today, here before you. But I didn't just show up. This is me 30 years ago. This is my high school uh, yearbook photo. And this is a drawing that I did from a high school dance. The theme was Midsummer Night's Dream. I don't know why. It wasn't in summer. It was during the school year. Um, so. <laughs> It's an old piece. This is from my high school sketchbook. This is a character named Steve Latimer. I hope there's no one named Steve Latimer here. But his name was Steve Latimer, and he was um, a character in a comic book I forgot that I had started writing in high school about a punk band who lived like in a farmhouse in Iowa. I'm from Iowa originally. Um, I didn't have any idea how to make a comic book story. Um, I knew how to draw things and uh, make a character who looks a lot like John Taylor from Duran Duran. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I didn't even like Duran Duran at the time, but now I think they're awesome. Um, so that comic book was forever unfinished, much like many of the sketches in my, in my high school sketchbook. Um, sort, of, sort of halfway done. Started, but never done. And because I lived in Iowa, and, well, not because I lived in Iowa, but I thought, because I lived in Iowa, that there wasn't really a way for me to go on to make comic books. At the time, I thought, for some reason, I thought that you had to live in New York to make comics, and that was sort of true. This is the late 80s. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have web comics. Um, so I kind of spent some time not doing anything creative. I didn't make comics, and that went on for a year, and a couple more years, and a couple more years. And I really, I, I was in college, but uh, I, took, I took art classes, but the art department really didn't support the kind of art that I wanted to do. This is important. You sh if, if you go to college for a creative field, try to find out in, ahead of time if, if the department in the creative field that you're going for holds the t type of creativity you want to do in contempt. Um, because my art department basically thought of drawing things that look like things was kind of passe. So they were very into like sort of sort of uh, non-representational art, and uh, that wasn't what I was into, so I gave up. I gave up for a while. And then I met this guy. <laughs> and here's the thing about this guy. He was not only kind of awesome, but he was making comic books in Iowa. And so 
I started hanging out with him, more than hanging out with him, I was, became his girlfriend. Um, <laughs> and he worked at a comic shop as well as making comic books. It wasn't this comic shop, this is a photo from a comic shop somewhere in Colorado or something, but it was very similar to this. And as you can see, there are just piles and piles and piles of comics. So I was in this environment. I was able to read all of these comics. And this is just a selection of some of the types of comic books that I was reading at the time and later. Um, comic books that had superheroes, comic books from Europe, comic books from Japan, comic books from the past, comic strips from the early 20th century, uh, comics, comic books by punk rockers from Southern California. Just everything I could get my hands on, I was reading and I was learning. And then I started drawing comics again. And all those comics that I was reading and learning from, I was taking all those lessons and putting into my, my own comics. And I worked for a year, a couple more years, a couple more years, for quite a few years. And as I was learning, some, some of the stuff was good, some of the stuff was okay, but I kept learning and learning and learning how to go on until finally, I had a comic book, and I wrote a publisher, and I sent copies of my comic book to this publisher, and they said, yes, we will publish this comic book. I do not have any examples from this comic book here, because it was kind of not appropriate for this particular venue. Okay, so about that time, Paul and I decided that we were happy living in Iowa, but we might be happier living in Oregon. There's a lot of comic books going on in Portland, especially. Uh, Dark Horse is across the river in Milwaukee. There were a couple of other uh, publishers here in town. We knew that lots of like creators lived here, and we thought maybe we can do more with this career if we move to a place where more people are making a career like the one that we want to have. So we came to Oregon. And I met um, a bunch of these other creators. This is Steve Lieber. He's um, part of a studio that I joined called Periscope at the time, but now it's called Helioscope. And this is the space where I work. Um, as you can see, it's, it's got a bunch of us all sort of working together in the same space. This is not typical, by the way. The, um, usually when, when people um, are, are getting together cartoonists on online perhaps, usually not in a real physical space. This has been incredibly valuable to me because uh, those artists who work in this space all share techniques and ideas and jobs with each other and uh, it's been fabulous. So then, having moved to Oregon, I produced with Paul a couple of uh, comic books at um, Oni Press, we did Banana Sunday. Top Shelf, we made Gingerbread Girl. And then from there, I got some uh, jobs working for other people's comics. X-Men, Power Pack, uh, some other titles. And then finally, started working on my own comic, Bandette. And Bandette is published in a kind of unusual way. First, we publish uh, digitally with the Comixology app. Um, so the individual issues are available through this digital application for phone and tablet. And then later, Dark Horse comes along and publishes the book in print. So there's me. That's my story. Thank you. <laughs>